I'm Christina Georgi and I welcome you to my channel. Today we'll discuss unit 1 that is the process of communication. In this particular unit you'll get introduced to the aspects of communication that is the process of communication, barriers to communication, the different types of communication we'll also study how written communication differs from oral communication we'll also learn about the different types of face to face interactions we'll study what conversation means we'll also learn about the characteristics and conventions of conversation finally we'll conclude with the difference between conversation and other speech events so let's get started Dear learners we all engage in the process of communication in our day to day lives whenever we interact with somebody we are actually communicating we live in an age of communication characterized by speed efficiency and the ability to transcend physical or geographical limitations now we can call people across the world we can video conference with people across the world all such aspects are possible now let's have a look at the dictionary definition of communication communication refers to i quote to exchange thoughts or make known information or feelings by speech writing or other means to transmit i unquote dear learners always remember that communication involves not just words with face to face dialogue our facial expression tone body language ability to listen with patience all contribute to the conveying messages and information between people would you call such kind of communication obviously it's the non verbal communication we'll come to that in course of time now let's look at the elements of communication there are six major elements involved in the process of communication namely the addresser and the addressee the topic the channel the code the message form and the setting we all know that communication involves at least two persons so there must be a sender and a receiver there must be a speaker and a listener or there should be an addresser and the addressee so who can be the addresser addresser is simply the speaker whereas the addressee is simply the listener moving on to the topic topic refers to the contents of the message whatever is the subject matter referred that would be the topic now comes the channel that is the medium through which message travels for that matter the channel could be a letter a telephone an email etc now comes the code what do you mean by code it is simply the language of the message if the message is being transmitted in english language what would be the code english suppose we are transmitting the message in french what would be the code french moving on to the message form it refers to the selection of particular grammar and lexical choices of the message so what do you mean by lexis lexis refers to the words in a language and finally the setting it could be the social and physical setting so let's consider our case right now i'm communicating with you right so this communication involves me the addresser and you the addressee what is the topic the process of communication and what about the channel yes you guessed it right you too what about the code am i speaking in korean obviously not i'm speaking in english so the code would be english and to sum up the process of communication the sender who can be the speaker or writer encodes a message okay and this process is called encoding so this message could be written or spoken and 
through the process of decoding the decoder that is the receiver who could be a listener or a reader decodes the message and dear learners it is very essential to have a clear cut idea regarding this process so whom do you think plays an active role in the process of communication obviously the role of the decoder is much more important it is because the decoder is actively engaged in making meaning on the basis of his or her background knowledge and the context of communication dear learners the context also is extremely important now let's move on to the macro functions of communication there are seven macro functions attributed to communication the emotive function the directive function the phatic function the poetic function the referential function the meta linguistic function and finally the contextual function so let's have a detailed look at all these aspects the emotive function the word itself gives you the meaning it means to communicate the inner states and emotions at times we express our emotions through words such as oh no alas hurray so these all come under the emotive functions moving on to the directive functions seeking to affect the behavior of others close the door please unmute yourself please please subscribe to my channel all these could be directive functions phatic function opening the channel or checking that it is working this comes in while opening the channel or checking that it is working for example hello is this thomas cook can you hear me mrs gupta all such queries could be part of phatic function now let's move on to the poetic function that is the particular form chosen is the essence of the message this refers to the aesthetic function of language the poetic function refers to the aesthetic function of language what do you mean by referential function this is used to carry information we also have the meta linguistic function that is focusing attention on the code itself for example in modern usage you are free to use will or shall both are accepted and finally the contextual function that is creating a particular kind of context you know how i do my lead in and set the context for my sessions right so yes these are the seven macro functions of communication it is said that communication can never be 100% complete do you know the reason obviously there can be barriers to communication now let's consider some of these barriers firstly code suppose i come to class and say anya seyo yurobun che sobe ushinga se hanyo hanneda instead of hello dear learners welcome to my class don't you feel like there will be confusion what would be the reason language that is the code if the speaker and the listener are not able to understand the code there could be a barrier to communication that is if the addresser and the addressee do not share the same language between them there will be a barrier to communication vocabulary suppose i come to class and say quintessential most of you might not be able to understand its meaning is yes, that is not part of your active vocabulary so vocabulary can also be a barrier to communication because it differs from person to person okay moving on to concept that is certain technical and subject specific concepts may not be understood by everybody so whatever your field of expertise is whatever your job area is there must be some technicalities associated with this particular area that most others at your home won't be able to understand right so such things would be part of concept now background knowledge and shared assumptions so such knowledge related to one's own culture or area or locality won't be understood by anybody who's outside such cultural aspects 
similarly pronunciation intonation accent and stress in spoken language also becomes barriers culture specific communication may cause misunderstanding yes physical environment noise and other environmental disturbances suppose i am recording this video from a construction site what would be the situation will you be able to listen to me obviously not what if you face technical difficulties what if your wifi is not working all such things would come under the physical environment and now comes affective factors that is the personal factors such as anxiety fear attitude lack of motivation values beliefs etc dear learners as i always say please keep yourself motivated if there is a will there is definitely a way okay on that note let's move on to the different types of communication communication may be classified into several categories on the basis of expression communication can be categorized into written oral and gestural in nature on the basis of flow communication can be categorized into internal and external internal communication could be vertical and horizontal on the basis of relationship communication can be categorized as formal and informal communication firstly let's consider the various media of expression that is written oral and gestural communication can be achieved through various media such as writing speech gestures and actions one can use written words or draw pictures or one can use speech sounds do you know which of these came first speech or writing speech came first and writing system was developed later on therefore speech is primary and writing secondary but there are still some languages which are spoken but not written in fact several of the tribal languages do not have any script deaf and dumb people use actions and gestures in order to communicate with each other this is also a form of communication and is known as sign language the visually challenged read and write using braille what do you think would be the popular form of communication at the workplace communication via email could be the most popular form of communication if we look at the workplace scenario it can take various forms such as letters circulars office memorandums newsletters brochures bulletins reports magazines etc i hope you must be familiar but this doesn't mean that oral communication is not used in workplace transactions of course oral communication is also used speech is used quite often i should say it takes the form of face to face interaction it could be telephone conversations lectures seminars meetings discussions etc remember expression through body language is known as gestural communication very often we nod the head in order to say yes right yeah that could be a way of gestural communication now let's move on to downward upward and horizontal communication so suppose a communication happens between a superior and a subordinate at the workplace that is from a higher to a lower level of authority this is an example of downward communication from a higher official to a lower official there are also occasions when communication flows from a subordinate to a higher official that is it may be a report suggestion opinion etc so this could be an upward communication both these are forms of vertical communication that is upward communication and downward communication are forms of vertical communication now you must be wondering what do you mean by horizontal communication see horizontal communication can also be called as lateral communication that is interaction between the same level of employees or people for that matter that is interaction between the production manager and marketing manager of a firm could be horizontal or lateral in nature 
all of you know the distinction between formal and informal communication right suppose you are talking to your brother at home for sure you'll be speaking to him in a very informal tone but suppose he is your boss at the workplace will you be speaking in the same way obviously not you will speak to him in a formal tone and way similarly the way you speak to your best friend would certainly be different from the way you speak to your teacher or your boss for that matter therefore the words formal and informal are used to indicate change in form and language of communication according to change in relationship between the addresser and the addressee and the context of situation at the workplace these two terms that is formal and informal are used in a slightly different sense than what we generally understand by them communication done through the chain of command is known as formal communication it involves the transmission of official message and the formal organization structure whereas informal communication does not flow through the official channels of communication it involves the spontaneous expression of reactions and ideas and is usually done orally hence it may carry incomplete or incorrect information as well now let's move on to written and oral communication both these modes can be used for communication but while they perform the same function their form and manner of use differ in many respects for example one makes use of sounds other of symbols which one makes use of sounds obviously oral communication and which one makes use of symbols yes written communication the speaker has available to him or her the full range of voice quality effects as well as facial expressions postural and gestural systems but these paralinguistic features are denied to the writer all these are not available to the writer now let's look at some of the advantages of oral communication In oral communication the speaker can monitor and match the reactions of the hearer. Oral communication is quicker, more economical and more effective than written communication. Doubts and misunderstandings can be cleared on the spot as immediate reaction and response is also available. There are also certain disadvantages to oral communication. speech is less organized than written language it contains many incomplete sentences often it contains simply sequences of phrases these features may easily create misunderstandings oral communication is less reliable why is that so because it is not available for future reference it is also affected by the attitudes and personality of the speaker Similarly when we look at the written mode there are also there are advantages as well as disadvantages as the writer is writing for an absent reader he or she may look over reflect edit write and rewrite the same matter this person can write as many times as he or she wants he or she can even look up the dictionary for that matter Speaking about the disadvantages, uh, the writer has no access to immediate feedback and the writer has to imagine the reader's reactions. This non-reciprocal nature of written communication makes it more difficult to learn. Written communication is time-consuming, expensive and rigid and it becomes difficult to maintain secrecy. Let's move on to the different types of face-to-face interactions. Moving on to the different types of face-to-face interactions. The function of language where transfer of information is involved is called transactional function. We have already seen that. What do you mean by interactional function? The function involved in expressing social relations and personal attitudes. World of business one has to make use of language for performing both these functions in business transactions different situations may arise 
when one has to use language for different types of face to face interactions that could be conversation for establishing social contact performing various functions such as introducing oneself and others participating in discussions taking part in conducting meetings and interviews lecturing demonstrating company's products talking about where you work describing simple and everyday operations describing work business operations etc most of these encounters will be transactional while some of these will be interactional in nature now let's move on to conversations as such do you think there are rules for conversation in every language of the world see native speakers learn naturally as part of their growing up in the society and follow these rules in their conversation with other native speaker while analyzing the characteristics and conventions of conversation the most important aspect is the cooperative and politeness principle see when people take part in conversation they bring to the conversational process shared assumptions and expectations about what conversation is how conversation develops and the sort of contributions they are each expected to make when people engage in conversation they share common principles of conversation that lead them to interpret each other's utterances as contributing to the conversation philosopher greece has described four maxims what do you mean by maxims they are just principles so the principles of cooperative behavior so there are four principles of cooperative behavior which speakers observe in conversation they are namely maxim of quantity maxim of quality maxim of relation and maxim of manner according to the maxim of quality make your contribution just as informative as required according to maxim of quality make your contribution one that is true maxim of relation make your contribution relevant and as per maxim of manner avoid obscurity and ambiguity be brief and orderly as possible have you noticed that very often conversations start off with greetings if he says hi b says hi so this could be considered as if an adjacency pair one way in which meanings are communicated and interpreted in conversation is through the use of both we call adjacency pairs adjacency pairs are utterances produced by two successive speakers such that the second response is identified as related to the first as an expected follow up it could also be a complement acceptance pair that is if he says that's nice dress we'll say thank you obviously so that could also be an adjacency pair so there is a basic rule that is the basic rule of adjacency pair operation is that when a speaker produces a recognizable first pair part he or she should stop talking and the conversational partner should produce a recognizable second pair part that is a should address something and stop and wait for b to respond accordingly openings and closings are also used in conversations very often this is done through the use of an adjacency pair such as greeting greeting request grant question answer etc you can see sample examples in your course book another important dimension of conversational organization is the way topics are selected for discussion topic development is also important turn taking is equally important that is one has to wait for the other person to respond rules for turn taking differ according to the type of the speech event for example in classroom students generally raise a hand to take a turn to talk right yes repairs may be initiated by either the speaker or the hearer What do you mean by repair? The process of conversation involves monitoring to ensure that the intended message has been communicated and understood. 
This involves correction whenever it is suspected that the message has not been received as intended. So the term repair refers to the efforts by the speaker or the hearer to correct trouble spots in conversation. The examples are provided in the textbook you can read about it. You should also have an idea regarding the difference between conversation and other speech events. Conversation can be contrasted with other types of speech events such as lectures, discussions, meetings, interviews, debates, etc. We recognize each of these speech events as distinct by virtue of differences in the number of participants who take part in them. Openings and closings is already said are specific speech events some speech events may not begin as soon as the required person are present they may require formal markers before the speech properly begins we'll be talking about interviews and meetings in the upcoming chapters so to sum up we have tried to understand what communication is and defined it as the process of meaningful interaction between two or more persons Communication can be achieved through use of language, written or spoken and gestures. There are different types of communication and these are used on different occasions. Each of these modes of communication has its own advantages and disadvantages. Communication may involve repeated interactions or negotiations of meaning and the addresser and the addressee play active roles in this process. We also describe different types of face-to-face -face interactions, especially conversation, its main features, and how to develop it to make it meaningful. We have also described briefly some other types of face-to-face -face interactions and how they differ from each other and also from conversation. Dear learners, from the examination point of view, you will have to be very clear regarding the process of communication. Another important question, perhaps an essay question, could be regarding the barriers to communication. It is also very essential to have an idea regarding the characteristics and conventions of conversation. I've already uploaded a video on the important topics from BEGA 182. If you haven't watched, please find the link in the description.